What's the best boat for you? Whether you're fishing the flats for bonefish or trout, heading offshore trolling for dolphin, or bottom fishing for grouper, Florida Sportsman's Best Boat will provide the information you need to decide which boat is the best boat for you. Florida Sportsman's boating editor and trusted selected experts have traveled to some of Florida's hottest fishing locations to review the latest in outboard technology, as well as run 36 boats in 12 different classes, including flats boats, bay boats, and center consoles. Today on Florida Sportsman's Best Boat, we are leaving out of the Fort Pierce Inlet, where boats compete in offshore fishing tournaments throughout the year. Our host, Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine, will be joined by Ron Mitchell, division champion and two-time winner, Angler of the Year in the Southern Kingfish Association. Dave and Ron will take the class of 26-foot center consoles and put them through their paces. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. popular size center console is one in the 26-foot range. It allow you serious offshore capabilities but still fit in your driveway. You know they're not that much harder to handle than a smaller boat and one person can launch and recover it by themselves. A boat in this size range performs great with a pair of smaller outboards like 150 horsepower. But let's say you want to travel for the weekend to a fishing destination, this is an easy boat to trailer. No wide load permit required. A boat in this class gives you a really big feel. You can venture further offshore in search of that weed line full of dolphin and wahoo. But if you're out there and the conditions get rough, you've got enough fiberglass around you to be safe and make it back into port. Other benefits of a 26-foot center console is you can get them with bow seating, stern seating, large fish boxes, dual live wells, and a head in the console makes it a lot more comfortable to spend the entire day on the water. A 26-foot center console strikes a good balance between a boat that can handle fishermen, divers, the family. You can set these boats up in a really large variety of ways. If you configure your 26-foot center console with T-top and outriggers, you can hold your own in a tournament against one of these big sport fishermen. And all of your buddies are going to have plenty of room, especially if you want to bottom fish for snapper and grouper. You know, these deep V hulls are great for offshore, but yet they don't draft that much water. So if you want to prowl the inshore waters for snook, trout, redfish, you still can. You know, a 26-foot center console will allow you some efficiencies that aren't available in the larger boats because you can power them with the smaller outboards. A 26-foot center console costs less to purchase, less to maintain, and a lot of these boats we tested were getting over three miles to the gallon. To best show the key features that makes this class of center console boats stand out, we took a closer look at the Angler 2600, the Cobia 256, and finally, the Stewart Boat Works 26. The 25 foot 6 inch Angler 2600 is a well laid out fishing machine. With an 8 foot 9 inch beam, it has features that will appeal to the serious pro as well as the weekend angler. An innovative dual access anchor locker, recessed bow rails, fish box, live well, stern seating, and a dive door were all incorporated into the design for versatility. 200 gallons of fuel is more than enough if you opt for the maximum horsepower of 450. Twin 150s had no problem giving this 5,300 pound haul plenty of performance. You can choose seven different haul colors at no extra cost, and their hauls are backed by a lifetime haul warranty. Since acquiring Cobia several years back, Maverick Boat Company has evolved the Cobia 256 into a true competitor in the offshore fishing arena. A new deep V hull design allows the boat a much larger feel. The 360 degree fishability of this boat is enhanced by a 28 gallon dual drain bait well, two index fish boxes, a leaning post tackle station, and undergone a rod storage. 150 gallons of fuel is standard and the max horsepower is 400. The 4,000 pound hull is 25 feet 6 inches long and 8 feet 10 inches wide. Family features include a potty in the stand up center console, comfortable bow seating, and a hideaway aft seat on the transom bulkhead. A wide diver's door leads out to the built-in swim ladder, and a recessed bow rail makes walking up to the bow in rough conditions much safer. A new entry into the 26-foot market, the Stewart Boatworks 26, has a classic look and can be custom built to accept single, twin, or even stern drive power. At a length of 26 feet, in a width of 8 feet 8 inches, their hull, which is built with a solid fiberglass bottom, can handle up to 350 horsepower. Each boat is semi-custom built and the bow can be configured with U-shaped seating, 
a tournament-sized coffin box, are wide open depending on the owner's mission. Standard fuel capacity is 145 gallons. Additional standard features includes an insulated 300-quart fish box, recessed Linco trim tabs, and a self bailing cockpit with custom scuppers. Up next, Ron Mitchell will present the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. For more information on the Best Boat Series, pick up a copy of our new magazine, Florida Sportsman Best Boat at newsstands, or visit us on the web at floridasportsman.com. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's check in with Ron Mitchell as he presents the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. Captain Ron Mitchell, I'm here today to talk a little bit about bait. Um, I do a lot of tournament fishing and uh, the one thing I've learned over the 20 year span of my fishing career is how important bait is. And live well space like we have on this boat is a premium. Uh, the bigger the live well, the better the bait's gonna live. A couple things about bait. You want the best baits that you possibly have in your live well in the water. Uh, throughout the date, baits are going to get older, they're going to get tired, and the fresh baits are going to get away from you. So when you're looking in the live well and you're digging around for bait, you always want to work and try to get the best ones. The one thing you want to look at is your bait condition. On scaled baits, if they're missing scales, stuff like that, you don't want to use that bait. You want to keep them in the well in case you run out of bait at the end of the day, but use a fresh bait, ones that have all their scales, the ones their color looks good. You don't want the bait to be gasping for air. Uh, that's why a lot of times when you dip your net into the live well, you're going to pick out the weakest bait. So you definitely want to hunt around and find your best baits to deploy. That's going to give you a better opportunity to catch a big fish. All right, Ron, you know, since we've been filming the series, every single boat we've tested so far has had an anchor locker. But on this Angler 2600, this is the first one that I would say is very innovative in their design. Yeah, it's something I've never seen before. Um, a total open air anchor locker, which still has a bracket to hang the anchor, but you know, nothing's gonna get moldy in there, nothing's gonna get dirty in there really, because it's all open. And you can throw anything in there, life preservers, ropes, two anchors, we see right there, it's uh, pretty nice. Yeah, it, you just, like you said, you can access it from the top, but if the rope gets tangled, you can get it right there, I can throw fenders in there. And they even took this little bulkhead and they added five rod holders to it, so it's just another place where you can stand your rods up. Which is always a premium, finding rod storage and places to put rods on any boat, a 50 foot boat to a 26 to a 15 foot boat, you always need places to put rods. And that's an awesome place. Right. I guess really the, the bow of any boat is where your decision making process is gonna have to start. Whether you want it seating up here, whether you want it wide open for fishing, right. uh, and they all work. I mean, like in this particular boat, if you want to take the cushions off, you can. And if it's just the boys, you know, going for a day out on the water, then that way the cushions can stay home. But if you're going to take the family out, having the seating up here is nice. Right. Yeah, from what I would do, I wouldn't have the seating here because we do more hardcore fishing. So we want this open. Right. You know, so we could move around and, and, and be able to fight a fish and gaff a fish and get it in the boat safely without tearing up the cushions. Right. So that is an option that they can pull this whole section out or you know put it in. Right, they even have a coffin box right. in, the, in the center. And really for somebody that's looking for their first boat or really to step up into their first boat of this size, that's some of the decisions that they're going to have to make. You know, how do I want the boat configured? Because all the manufacturers out there have different configurations of the same hull. And whether you want the seating in the bow or a coffin box in the bow, maybe you want nothing up here. Maybe you just want a big old wide open bow where you can get right to the you know, the front of the boat and fight a fish. And, and that's why a lot of these companies are semi-custom boat companies, mm -hmm. you know, because they can customize it to what you want. Like if you have a big family and you need this type of seating, or if you don't and you're just a pure fishing machine, you don't want that. One thing I like that Cobia did, they opted for a larger console so they could get this side door and more storage, but 
with this rounded front and they've kept it kind of narrow, they didn't give up any of the walk room down the side. Oh, you got plenty of room. I mean, you, even someone my size can get through there with no problem. Uh, Dave, we have a pretty large walk-in uh, side entry console here. It's all finished really nice. It has access to the wiring uh, in the back and it actually has a porta potty down there. You know, 26 foot boat, you're going to be taking this boat out all day long. And if you're going to have women aboard, or even a lot of the guys I fish with, that's an important thing to have. Absolutely. Now, here on the back of the console, you know, pretty standard. You got good layout, you have a foot rest. I mean, we've seen this over and over again, but it's just the little things that set one boat apart from the other. And where they molded in this little lip on the back of the console, doesn't really seem like much, but if you go to set something up there and you're running, it's not going to end up in your lap. So here again, it's the little things that you look for when you're looking at one boat against another that really sets them apart and that'll make your day on the water more enjoyable. Yeah, just something that simple. Set a phone up there, you go to forget it, it's up there, you go up on plane to then fly to the back of the boat. Right. Get yeah. wet. When a manufacturer does something like this, it tells me that they're taking every attention to detail into fact when they build the boat. So that speaks volumes. Up next, Ron Mitchell will present the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. This segment is brought to you by the best-in-class Evinrude E-Tech 150 horsepower outboard engine. Proven power, proven reliability. For more information on the Best Boat series, pick up a copy of our new magazine, Florida Sportsman Best Boat at newsstands, or visit us on the web at floridasportsman.com. Evinrude E-Tech has been outperforming four-stroke engines for years. But what about the latest 150 four-strokes that claim to deliver two-stroke-like torque? See the proof for yourself. Get your free DVD now and watch how the two-stroke Evinrude E-Tech 150 outpulls and out-accelerates the four-stroke competition. See how it wins when it comes to maintenance, ease of winterization, and more. Evinrude E-Tech is the true champion. Go to Evinrude150Challenge.com and get your free DVD now. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's check in with Ron Mitchell as he presents the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. Okay, I'm Ron Mitchell. I'm going to talk a little bit about downriggers today. If you don't have downriggers on your boat, you're only fishing about 1% of the water column. I believe that downriggers are a very important tool to catch fish, tournament fish, recreational fish, all types of fish. There are certain times of the year where a fish might not even come to the surface to get a bait. It might be too warm out. Uh, fish are very temperature oriented and depth oriented. They might not come past 20 feet off the bottom. So you need to get the baits down to them. Um, I always deploy two downriggers on my boat. Um, a live bait down about halfway. If I'm in 100 foot of water, I'll run a live bait down 100 feet. I'll run a, a dead bait down a little bit deeper than that. Um, and throughout the day, I'll stagger those. I'll move them up and down. I'll change out what baits I have on there. There's so many options you can do with a downrigger. And there's so many different types of downriggers. This one's a electrical downrigger, and it has a lot of options and a lot of things you can do with it. But they make cheaper ones that are manual. This is the downrigger system I use. And it has a release clip on it where the rod would be in the rod holder. You put your bait out a certain depth behind the boat and you clip it in here and then you'd run the ball down to the desired depth. Um, this also can be mounted in a rod holder like it is here where you could take this to any boat you fish on, your friend's boat, this boat, uh, any type of boat you want. Or you can hard mount it uh, and take this part of the, the mounting system and screw it right into the uh, gunnel of the boat just like you do to a rod holder. So it's very versatile. Uh, you can use it um, in many different ways but I, I do implore that you use a downrigger. Um, I catch a lot of big fish down deep and I will never leave the dock without a downrigger. Now, out of all the three boats that came here today, this one really is focused more toward the hardcore guy and that's something I know is dear to your heart. Talk a little bit more about what we're looking at here. Well, um, you know, we have a coffin box which has tremendous amount of storage, you know, right here on the top. Uh, I'm not sure how big this is, but it's very big. I mean, you could put, you know, a good 50-pound kingfish in there, which we've come across a couple of those. Mm -hmm. You you guys haven't, but we <laughs> have. Um, and then underneath, it's got a, a tremendous uh, fish box underneath, which uh, this opens up, and uh, there's another about the same amount of storage as on top. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. 
So it's just another way to configure the boat. You can have it with bow seating or you can have it with a big coffin box like this. And really, a 26 foot boat is, is probably at the lower limit of what you can comfortably put a coffin box. If this was a 23 foot boat, this just wouldn't fit. No, it would take up too much room. I mean, they've tried that in the past and it just went away because it just took up too much room. You couldn't really fish around it. This, you still have room in the bow to get around it, fight a fish, mm -hmm. and uh, you still could do a lot of things. You could fight a, you know, run a kite off the bow and use this as seating, and it, it uh, I, I like coffin boxes. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they have it laid out very nicely. One thing that really caught my eye, though, if you look at the wiring and the way they did it, it's, it's very yacht-like. I don't know if that's the right terminology or not, but normally you don't see that type of wiring on a boat this size. No, you see it on multi-million dollar yachts, like you said. I mean, you, you look at some yachts these days, and, and that's what you go to first, just to look at it, it's like a piece of art. And that's what they did, did with this boat. They did a very good job. Everything's under there, too, the batteries, battery switches. It's dry. It's easy to get to, but it's out of the weather. I really don't like batteries and switches and everything down in the bilge. You're never going to have a problem when you're offshore, I mean when you're in the dock, it's always going to be offshore. You'll be on your hands and knees, you'll be in a wet bilge, stuff under the console just lasts long. Well, it's protected, you know, there's, it's not getting a lot of salt, it's not getting any salt water hardly right. in there. And it, and it will last uh, the lifetime of the boat. So another important thing to look at when they're choosing your boat, where do they put their, their battery switches and their batteries and things like that, systems that you're going to have to take care of. Can you get to it and is it away from the salt water? Absolutely. They, they definitely did their homework. and. Uh, and thought a lot before they put it in the place where they wanted to put it. All right, Ron, here again in the back of a 26-foot center console. I like the amount of room you have back here. 23s, they just really, really get skinny, and the 29s would have more room, but like we said before, a 29 is a much larger boat. So this is plenty of room back here to, for four guys, whether you're fishing or diving or just gonna cruise the sandbar and flip up the stern seating. Yeah, plenty of room, and, and, and like this boat, like we, we talked in the beginning, and we, you know, we have the, the bench seating in the back that folds down or folds up so it stays out of the way if you're doing some fishing or diving, or even diving. I mean, you can sit back there and get ready for your, uh, your dive. Oh, it'd be an easy place to sit when your tank's not falling over. Right. Yeah, it's just, you know, there again, versatility. This boat is set up for fishing, for diving, for family. Uh, pretty much anything you're going to do in a boat this size, you know, this boat's really set to do it. Yeah, it has some uh, nice fish boxes on the side. What I like about a fish box on the floor is you gaff the fish and you just throw them straight down in the fish box. Yeah, you can put a couple dolphin, cobia, or my favorite, kingfish. Yeah, and this box goes way back, so even the size kingfish you catch would fit in that box. Oh yeah, big one will fit in there. Up next, Dave and Ron will take you through our featured 26-foot center consoles. There's plenty more to come, so stick around for more Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Salt Life Sport Optics, Zeiss Lenses, Rypel Technology, Total UV Protection, Live the Salt Life, Minimize Color Distortion and Glare to retain true color recognition, Combine Lifestyle and High Performance, Salt Life Sport Optics. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's get back to Dave and Ron as they review our featured 26-foot center consoles. All right, Dave, we have one more uh, access here. This goes to the uh, fuel separators, easy access. You can uh, change them out anytime you need to very easily. I like that, too, because they're not down in the bilge. They're not going to get all rusted out with salt water. And right behind the dive door, if you lift this up, you can fold out the dive ladder. Nice. So you're, what I like about this is they've covered it with a piece of fiberglass, so you're going on and off, you're not stepping on the ladder, but if you need it, man, it's just right there. Right, and it's and it's uh, flush where you can't get any lines caught on it or anything like that while you're fishing. Yeah, another good Very nice. Looking at it from a fisherman's perspective, yeah, you're right. We've gained a lot more room. Uh, the boat sea keeping ability is a lot more than a smaller 23. We're still powered with a single motor. Even though it's a 300, it's still a single, so it's gonna save you some money over a pair of 150s. And really, today, with the way the outboards are built, they're so reliable, you really don't have to have a second outboard. No, not on this class of boat. You're, you're still, uh, you know, in the next step up, you definitely have to go with the twins. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't work. But with this class of boat, you're still fine with that, that uh, single motor. Right. The single motor going over the Bahamas is a little sketchy sometimes, but 
uh, you can always add twins. You know, you can do a twin application with this also where you can go to the islands back and forth and have that extra safety issue with the motor. Right, and there again, that, that comes down to the decisions that you have to make when you, when you buy your boat. Right. Single power, twin power, the size of the boat. So really it comes down to, first of all, pick the boat that defines your mission. What are you going to be doing with the boat? Fishing, taking the family out. When you've decided on a 26-foot center console, now decide on the features that you need to really make that boat fit your lifestyle, you're going to get a lot more use out of that boat. All right, if you're just going to go out to the sandbar on the weekends and just fish offshore right in your local area, a single application is awesome. But if you're going to run over the Bahamas every other weekend, you might want to go with the twin application. Right, just I to agree. Have that extra Now on the Angler, they've opted to go with twin power, like we were talking about before. If you're going to make some trips over to the Bahamas, or if this is going to be really a hardcore boat like this is set up to be for fishing, there's a lot of good applications for twins. There is. I mean, you know, the, the, the motors these days are so reliable, so it's not really a case of losing a motor, but it's just, you know, you have that extra protection of having two motors. And, and you get a little bit more torque and a little bit more speed uh, out of the twin application. Mm -hmm. And being that they're only 150s, there's still plenty of power to push the boat, but it seems 150 is at that range where you really haven't made the jump into a great big power head in that 200, 250 range. This is still an economical motor to purchase and a very economical motor to operate. Absolutely, and, and uh, very reliable. You know, the 150s are, you know, most of these companies, they, that, that's their, their favorite motor, one of the best motors out. It is. That's the sweetheart of their line. A pair of those on the sweetheart of the center console really rolls into one nice package. We're here at Pirates Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. What a great facility. They've got a marina, they have a hotel, they have a restaurant, they sell fuel here, bait. We're just minutes from the St. Lucie Inlet. This is a place where you can come and spend an entire week and never have to leave. We're just minutes from the Stewart Inlet, and this is some of the best fishing and diving on the Treasure Coast. Pirates Cove Marina, it's right here in Stewart, Florida. Great jump off place to go over to the islands. If you're leaving for the Bahamas, this is a great place to leave from or to come back to. You can leave your boat and go clear customs. They have a marina for transient people. They also, you can leave your boat here full time. So if you get yourself a 26 foot center console and you're looking for a place to take it, Pirates Cove Marina right here in Stewart, Florida. If you're ready to step up to a larger center console fishing boat, but don't want the expense of triple outboards or a boat in the 39-foot class, a 32-foot center console may just be the right size. The wider beam over the smaller 29s and slightly longer length allow for a more stable platform and added options for the fisherman and the family. This is why a 32-foot center console may just be the best boat for you. Be sure to tune in next time to see more of the 36 boats we tested from skinny water capable 16 foot technical polling skiffs all the way to Gulfstream fishing machines in the 42 foot center console class. From stalking bonefish on the flats to pelagics in the ocean or if you prefer quality time with the family, let Florida Sportsman help find the best boat for you. Camera boat provided by Carolina Skiff. For more information on the Best Boat series, pick up a copy of our new magazine, Florida Sportsman Best Boat at Newsstands, or visit us on the web at floridasportsman.com.